The playground is purity. Street ball here is no joke. It's all go. It's about me and the guy defending me. You gotta get to the bucket. You can either play or you can't. There are some names that, when mentioned, immediately spark visions of dominance on pro courts. Names like Amari Stoudemire and Paul Pierce. But before these players could shine on a global stage, first they had to prove themselves on the most hallowed stage of all, the playground. Nah, 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 you stopped it. Uh, anyway, you gotta be creative. It's times you just gotta open up your mind. Try to do stuff you've never done before. If you can't score, you know what I'm saying, all the flash and all that, that's nice. I mean, you have to be a warrior, man. It's a tougher environment, you know, it's like this idea of no blood, no foul. If I can find a court where guys are playing, I was there. But growing up in New York, like I said, where we at right now, they said the greatest players went to this playground to play. I came up here every day and couldn't get on a team. First game in here, I think I scored 67. There's a lot of kids who, who really can't afford to go to certain colleges. They play basketball right in the parks where they live at. They play basketball right in their backyard. And, and they produce greatness right there. Going around the country, you had guys in any city. Billy Harris could have played up here. Fly is the New York me. And, and I am the Chicago Fly. The best story I can give you about Billy Harris is this. I went around the city of Chicago to ask anybody who played against this dude. One person could not tell you they ever seen this dude have a bad game. And I'm talking about under 30 points. I had no friends, no. He is hated. So when I come out here, I'm coming out here to destroy you. Where I got that from was the playground. Yeah, you had to be versatile. You had to play anywhere on the court. You watch the game today. You see they play a zone. Unheard of when I played a zone. Come on, you better, you better buckle up and, and let's do the bump. When I went into a gym to play, it was like taking candy from a baby. Because in the playground game, there's nobody to help you. It's rougher, uh, there are no referees usually, and you know, it's like winner gets to keep the court. Pure efficiency. If I shoot it, it's going in. This is more than a shoot, more than a sport, more than a game. This is the place where stars are To help players conquer outdoor hoops, Nike created three shoes, the Air Raid, the Darwin and the Indestruct. You gotta understand, it's, it's all weather. You have to deal with, you know, weather conditions outside of just concrete. We play ball on ice. We play ball in snow, we play ball in rain. <laughs> you know, you don't need shoes, you need tires to play ball in Chicago. Oh yeah, for outdoor use only. We, we got on a plane and flew to New York, we flew to LA and we interviewed people uh, on the courts, some dangerous neighborhoods, some places we probably shouldn't have been, but we, we learned a lot real fast about um, the actual environment, so like uh, the court itself. We just started to think about how the shoe should be more uh, sturdy, first of all, and uh, more resistant to abrasion. And uh, would it be okay to actually just make the whole thing black? Uh, if you spend any time in the street, your shoes get real dirty real fast. Bringing color to the outsoles and the midsole did two things. One, it made the stance of the shoe look tougher and more rugged. It also eliminated that variant, right? Because now kids say, see, it doesn't get dirty fast. So then from a functional standpoint, what was great about the Raid, right, you're also trying to lock things down. So that's where the X-Strap came from. I begged my dad for those shoes, bought them, never wore them. They're for outside, damn it, wear them. I'm no, dad, these are too pretty. Alonzo Warning shoes did well here, and he had the Indestruct. One of the commercials for that shoe was with Alonzo Mourning, right, who obviously played in, you know, at Georgetown in D.C., one of the roughest areas from an outdoor courts standpoint. Indestruct kind of had a different angle. Durability and outdoor products were very popular. It was becoming very overtly indestructible. The Darwin was a good shoe. High up, strapped up, laces tight. The swoosh on the Darwin also went in a different direction that people liked a lot. If you look at the profile that that shoe has, it almost feels like a boot for the basketball court. This is kind of an irreverent shoe. It's designed for a time when you can be creative, the summertime, the outdoor game, and, and just have fun, not take yourself so serious. Every single thing that you can do of a positive nature on a basketball court, you are free to do.
These kicks from the players who rocked them possess an attitude and a swagger that have honored legendary playgrounds in cities like New York and Chicago ever since.